I shouldn't be worrying about that because that's your emails, Mike. But then again, I can't help but read the notifications. Well, I'm sorry that I've been. How is your eye? How are your eyes? I mean, are you still twenty? Are you still seventy-five percent blind? Oh well, currently, yeah. Yes. Currently, yeah. Um, yeah. I've um, yeah. The issues that I've been having, um, w- with the good eye. Yes. Um. I think that I fixed it by by using money to buy cleanser for it. Yeah. Um, and we'll see how that goes. Um, actual legit money. Actual legit. That grab it because it, it was Boston Advance by, cleaner by Bosch and Lomb. Yes, and um, look at the ba- bottom. Yes. How much? How much is the thirty mils of cleanser? Twenty three dollars ninety. Yes. From where? Um, pharmacy. Which pharmacy? Um, Green Line. Green Line Could, Hospital Pharmacy. Couldn't you get it cheaper? Well, I don't know because I needed a quick response, and that was the only product. That they had for my type of lens. Wow. Yep. So what is your lens? What does it say on the packaging on the front, Sophie? Visibly tinted formula suitable for rigid, gas permeable contact lenses. Yes. Osmosis is a process in which oxygen is diffused from a high concentration to a low concentration through a semi permeable membrane. Yay! Well done, Sophie. <laughs> well done. Because if you don't know anything about contacts, contacts comes in three forms. Mm. You have your dailies, yeah. which are one use only. Uh, basically, you stick it in, and then as soon as you finish, you throw it away in the bin. You have your weeklies, which um, you may get a few um, protein deposits here and there. And then you have your RGPs, mm-hmm. which is Sophie just suggested. Um, but the be- um, the good part is is that they're long lasting. The shelf life of one of those is about half a decade. But the bad part is is um, it's a high amount of maintenance required, and you have to clean the out of them so it's like having glasses right next to your cornea pretty much yes. and um we have discussed on the previous podcast why i have contacts in um instead of glasses yeah um the good news on the eye front is that because i i, I have to premise this with something um in a cornea you have uh, five layers yeah all right um, you have your outside layer, which is your protected layer, and then you have um, your inner cornea, which gives you sight, right? And the corneal hydrops was was a built up of water from inside the cornea, so it actually burst from the inside out, mm. rather than from the outside in. So, you, you know, you, you can um, compare it to a pimple, for instance. Um, and what happened, uh, um, what the, ophthalmolo- the ophthalmologist um, said that the outside layer has been created. Yeah. Ooh, so that means it's healing from the outside in. Yes. So that's the that's the process, um, due to the botulism injection. Yeah. Um, it's also had the side effect of making Mark's eyes look younger. Oh, I I wouldn't say that. I, I'll just I, I always say to people that uh, in the know that I compare myself now to the wink emoji, <laughs> a permanent wink emoji. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, you, you know you could say pirate, and you could say Popeye all you like, 
but I always like to go to the wink emoji because it's ambiguous and has no negative connotations. True. So otherwise, how was your week? Because we basically described your week in uh, a week in eye health. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's 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 been a challenging week. Yes, which was why the podcast last week's podcast remains un- unedited. Uh, wait, wait. I deliberately. I okay. Ah. He, hear me out. Hear me out. Okay. Hear me out here. Um, I, I did get a message yes. last last night from my co-host stating that why didn't you edit the podcast to uh, to reduce it down to half an hour rather than the current time, which was an hour and eight minutes. Mm-hmm. I did that deliberately because it was the unlucky 13th episode. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, it kind of does. Sounds unlucky, so we may as well make it unlucky. Yeah, and especially with the unluckiness of the... Um, Fire alarms. Yeah. There was also a, a, a dramatic increase in adverts. Oh, yeah! <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, this podcast is brought to you by Boston Advance. Use the coupon code... AYU for zero percent off. This already hideously <laughs> this already hideously expensive product that makes your lenses look as if it's got cataracts. Yeah, um, yeah, um, because basically it just um, what would the best way to describe it? Milky, milky, like you're shampooing your hair. Yeah, only you're shampooing your eyes. Do not try this at home. <laughs> um, and then um, I've applied f- I, I had to apply for a special consideration yeah um, that's the reason why I wanted you to send that email yeah um, to get an extension on my assignments which is fine oh you don't need that anymore do you still need me to do that no okay good no um, because because uh, I because I got Sophie here to um, read over the instructions of the Boston Advance cleaner. Now Mike knows when he put when he can put his contacts in and write the email. As of his moment, the screens look like uh, one big giant pixel. I wouldn't say one giant pixel. Um, it, it's it, the best way to describe it is my eye is um. I see no detail. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and, and if we're talking about um, optics here. Yeah. Um, without my contact, my eyesight level is 645. Mm. Um, and with my contact, it is 615. Still bad. Thank you, Sophie. Mm-hmm. Thank you for your compliments on my eye. Thank you. But in saying that, how was your week? I know how exciting that was. Stress. Exams. Assignments. Oh, good news is I've started on Bioshock Infinite. Yes. That was fun so far. Yes. Yeah. So, so, um... Watch Dogs 2 Watch... Sophie? Can't afford that. Okay. Just making sure. Um, and there has been a serious amount of leaks in regards to gaming, but you can find it on your own accord. Such as? I'm not going to say anything. Because E3 is next month. E3 is next month. Another game I'm rather interested in is um, Detroit Become Human. Yeah, yeah, but that'll be later on. Later on. And, and, and speaking of things that have been made into video games what do you think about movies Sophie mmm the theme of today's podcast mmm yeah so here's another here's another thing Mike did this week he watched Doctor Strange yes I did what did you think of it I was bored I was bored half an hour into the movie and I'm just like like I, 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 like, I was thinking to myself while watching the movie 
I know how this is going to go. Did you predict the death of the Ancient One? Yes. Okay. I actually have quite a funny story to tell about films and things like that. The reason why it takes forever for the films to come to New Zealand, well, one of the reasons, is because every single media, every single film, every single, um, well, probably probably not YouTube videos, um, every single commercial um, media has to go through the censor, censor, censor office first. Censorship yes. office. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, one of my tutors... He has a friend of a friend who is a censor, right? And um, she said that this, the job has a double-edged sword because for every crap, for every good film she watches, she has to watch ten crap ones. Yeah. Yeah. And she has to watch the things that um, criminals make, psych- psychopaths make, and it's just like, no. Yeah. Rape. Rape videos, pedophilic oh, videos. That's great. I know, right? <laughs> and um, I have a fun fact. There's only about two or three games, video games, that are banned in New Zealand. Yes. One of them was banned was because rape was compulsory to, com- to advance in the story. Now, what is what was that game again? forgot what it was called. Um, yeah, there's been a... F- I know of a few... Yes. Um, I think Carmageddon was banned in New Zealand at the start. Yeah. At the release. Because it was the first um, game that had blood violence in it. Yeah. Um, I can get on Steam, so they must have relaxed the rules since. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and the same with Mortal Kombat as well. Yeah. Um, there's... I, I forgot what game it is, but it's yeah, it's it's the most banned game currently, and you can still get it on Steam. Uh, which which game? Which is the most banned game? I forgot what it was called. Anyway, back to films. So you p- could predict everything that actually would happen. No, it, it was your quintessential movie. Okay, so what is the formula for a Marvel film then? Okay, okay. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. Right? You have the origin story before the superpower. Yeah. Right? Or the suit. Yes. Something bad happens. Yes. Right? Um, there's sort there's there was there's some sort of insight. Yeah. Um some sort of learning or teaching, yeah, in regards to it, the, and then or the, conditioning, yeah, or and then the bad guy is finally announced. <laughs> then you've got the first battle, bad guy, the good guy loses, yeah. Someone dies, yeah, and then the good guy wins. So who dies in Captain America, the the first Avenger? The first Avenger. Captain America, the first yeah. Avenger. Technically, it was Bucky. Yeah, and nah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, nah. And also the, um, the professor when he gets the injection. True. How about the Winter Soldier? Does it work that way? Um... It- and Civil War. Captain America Civil War was pretty interesting. Well, I didn't I, I still haven't seen that yet, but I'm assuming it was Black Panther. No, Captain America the Winter Soldier no. Captain America Civil War basically breaks that formula. You might want to watch that then. Yeah. It's, I, it's the only one that does break the formula. Yeah. How about the Avengers? What's the formula for Avenger the Avengers films? Okay. Because you have a bunch of superheroes together. Okay, okay. Uh, let me think about this for a second. Just what? Just one second, Sophie. One second. Yeah. Um. Someone finds out that they have an overarching power that they can't untap. That they that they what? That they that they can't make that that is starting to overreact. Yeah. Event happens. Yeah. Initial bad guy shows up, gloats about everything. Yeah. 
Um, and then shit, shit hits the uh, yeah, yeah crap hits the fan. You might want to censor that. I know. Yeah. Um, and then the good guys win. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. And Deadpool makes fun of that formula. Yeah. 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 Very much so. True. Now, how about formula for James Bond film? (laughs) Because he said that Skyfall was pretty formulaic as well. So what's the formula for a good James Bond film? Okay. You have your... Okay, you have your start-up action sequence. Yes. Then you have the opening credit scene featuring British songwriter of the moment. Yeah, or... Oh, no, no, no. Not necessarily British. Well, there was Madonna. I know, but, but, but any sort of... Any sort of singer. Yeah. Right? But it seems to be focusing on British ones for the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let the sky fall, <laughs> let it crumble, we will stand tall. I'm editing that out. Pardon? I'm editing that out. You're going to sing it or no? No. Um, and then you have the premise. So you have Bond down in the dumps? No, no. The, the, then you got... The, no. Firstly, you have the premise. Premise, okay. Yeah. Like the setting up of the environment. Of the story. Of the story. Yeah. And then you have... Like uh, you're getting inklings that there are, there's villainy going on. Yeah. And then you have um, the MI6 briefing... Yeah. Then you have the Q briefing. No, 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 the MI6 briefing. What does it always end with? Like, uh, should you should you choose? No, that's no, that's Mission Impossible. Yeah. But, Sorry. Yeah. So you have the MI6 briefing. Yeah. You you have the meeting with the quartermaster. Yes, with all the wonderful gadgets. Yeah. Maybe steal for your castle too. Yeah. Then. Um. Then you go to a location. Then you have the ma- a minor plot point. Yeah. When when does the Bond girl come in? Um, between yeah, between the minor plot point and the v- villain showing his face. Okay. Okay. Then Bond girl shows up. Yeah. Then the major plot point starts. Yeah. You finally see the villain. Yeah. Villain gets his own, gets his way. Yeah. Bond goes away. Yeah. Broods. For, formulates a plan. There's some sort of sex scene involved there. When does the Bond girl die? Now. I mean, in, C- in, C- in Scepter, none of the Bond girl dies, which is which is basically a first. Yeah, which is a first. Yes. Yeah. But when the roundabouts for the other films, when do the Bond girls die? Yeah, pretty much after the after the minor plot point is finished. Ah, oh, so she's the minor plot point. Yeah. Then? And then, um, Bond formulates a plan, like I said. Yeah. Often spurred on by the death of his love. Yes. His 15th love. Screws it up. Yeah. Um, and then ad libs it. Yeah. Gets away with it. Yeah. Drives off in his Aston Martin to the sunset. And that's it. And then my sex is pissed off with him again because he did something wrong. Yeah, out of his ad lib plan. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, your knee's really uncomfortable. Yes. I know. So, what do you think about my. Makes sense. Yeah. How about Star Wars? A formula for Star Wars? Now, n- now the way that Star Wars works, mm. it's, it's a bit different. Why is that? Be- because no matter what happens, Star Wars does the traditional act. act does the traditional play setting. Oh, so it's like the seven stages of hero. No, we get three. Three st- No, someone said seven stages. No, it's three. Okay, because I watched TED Talk about it. Yeah, because like, like, because you've. Got, I'll link to the TED Talk, guys. Yeah, it's just like with any sort of Shakespeare play. Oh, so. Star Wars runs like Shakespeare. Yeah. Act 1, Act 2, Act 3. Okay. I am just wondering if the microphone is still picking me up because I'm still I'm so far away. Yeah, it's still picking you up. It's still picking me up. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You have Act 1, Act 2, Act 3 
and you just basically um, critique it down. Okay, so star, so which Star Wars is like which um, Shakespeare play the most? No, 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 no. So. We're, we're, we're just using the Shakespeare play as a, oh. a as the guide. Shakespeare play as the formula. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So how about action films in general? What are the what's well, so what's the formula for action films in general? Okay. Um, well, it's real protagonist. Yes. Okay. Um, action films are a bit different. Okay. Uh, okay. You've got... Bad part happens first. Right. Bad thing happens always first. That's what sets the motive. Yeah. Um, good guy shows up. Yeah. Has to do something. Yeah. Or else the bad guy's going to do something again. Yeah. Right? When does the romantic interest die? We're talking about action movies here. I'm pretty sure there's a romantic interest die in action films. No. Oh, good. No. Okay. Just, just, no. So when does the romantic interest get introduced? There is no romantic action, inter- there should not be any romantic interaction in action films. But they happen all the time. Name three examples. Oh, let's see. Uh, what's that? What's that film based on the comic book? Is like Hit Girl or something? No, no. no. Oh, Kick Ass. Kick Ass. I don't consider that to be an action film. I consider that to be a super movie, a superhero movie. This difference between the two. Yeah. Let okay. me. Okay. Let, let me carry on. John Wick. I have not seen that movie. Okay. Um. Okay. This is spoilers for the first five minutes. John Wick loves his wife very much. She dies. Yeah. Of cancer. I don't consider that to be a f- action film. Really? What's that then? A movie. Action. A Gen- movie. A movie. Just no genre. The Matrix. Mate. <sighs> well. Okay. The bad. Nero and Trinity. No, no, no. no. <laughs> L- let me finish. Yeah. When, okay, okay. Let me think about this. They don't kiss until the second movie. Still a romance. Boosh. No, wait, wait. You're talking about The Matrix. Yeah. Which is the first movie. Right? The Matrix trilogy then. No, no, you can't do that to me. You said The Matrix. But there's, but there's still this romantic element to it, to it in the Matrix. But, 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 but like, if, if if Trinity was a guy, yeah, it would be an action movie. So it wasn't. It wasn't quite an action film. No, no, because like, like, if you if, if Trinity was a guy, yeah, nothing in that movie would have changed. What? Nothing. Nothing would have. Oh, true. Okay. How about the second one, the Sick Matrix? If Trinity no, was no, a guy, no, you said. The Matrix. Fine, I changed my answer. The Matrix 2. Ugh. The bad part is is that The Matrix 2 is the worst out of the trilogy. And The Matrix 3? Let's close it up and put a little bow on it. What? That's pretty much what the three and third one was. It's not quite an action film? No, it's more it's more of a ending slash philosophy of it. Equilibrium. Have not seen that movie. Another action film that's... Okay. Hitchcock. Hitchcock. I've not seen that movie. That means you've seen... That means that I've seen a lot of action films with romantic elements to it, and you haven't. Yes. Because I'm a traditionalist. So a traditional action film shouldn't have any romance in it. No. All right. It should not have... Okay, okay. Here's something that should have romance in it, though. A romance film. What's the, what's the formula for a romance film? Oh, God. Oh, make me puke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, what's... So, I mean, I hate a romance film myself because I find them overtly cliché. So, what is in a romance film that makes us puke? That makes us vomit? That makes us... <sighs> ejaculate our concern for the human race it's pretty much saying that 
the male does everything for the woman. Yeah. That makes me puke. Hey, um, your, your sister reads those sorts of novels, right? Romance novels? Fifty Shades of Grey? Twilight? I know she has Twilight. I'm not sure about about Fifty Shades. I bet she does have Fifty Shades. But, but still. Um, yeah, it's yeah, it's because that the, 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 the man does everything for the woman purely on a whim. Because I think she will be to be together. Purely, ah! purely on a whim. So, what happens in a romance film? Um, no, 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 man no, meets woman. Please, please, can I can I give an example? Yeah, can sure. I give multiple examples? Please do. The Notebook. That was pure, <laughs> that was um, pure. Like, yeah. um, like, why are you doing this, sir? Why are you doing this? Because she's pretty. It's like what? Yeah, let's build a house for her if she comes back from her marriage. To another person. How about the Titanic? That was even more ridiculous. <laughs> oh, the best part about that movie yeah? was at the two and a half hour mark. So what happens at the two and a half hour mark? The boat splits in two. Yeah? Someone falls off the railing and hits the motor blade on the way down. That is the funniest bit of that movie. Oh my goodness. This goes, dark. It goes falls and then hits the blade and goes dunk. That's dark, okay. <laughs> I am a dark person. So, mind you, they say that the Titanic is also an allegory, allegory of greed. I know, yeah, and, and, and the way that James Cameron did it, I have to applaud him. Yeah. It is a four hour movie. Yeah. It takes two hours... Before it hit the iceberg. Yeah. Well, it took 13 days for it hit the iceberg in real life. In real life, sure. Yeah. But still, that is amazing. Sure. You made... Yeah, it's basically delay tactics on a massive scale. Yeah. Because two hours, that's the length, that's the length of most films, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so it took a whole film for the for the boat to hit an iceberg and the other another two hours for it to sink. Yeah. So Titanic Part One, we reached the iceberg. Pretty Titanic much. Part Two, we we've been, we've realized the consequences of our stupidity. Yeah, yeah. Which I think is hilarious. <laughs> so like, like I I applaud Cameron and the way that he did it. Okay, it was amazing. So have you watched the romantic film You've Got Mail? Yes, I have. So KP's telling me the formula for romance films. Now based on You Got Mail, Notting Notting Hill, four four weddings and a funeral. Are you a Hugh Grant fan? No. Just, it's just that Hugh Grant... Just saying. Mum's a, Hugh, Mum's a Hugh Grant fan and the type of films he is in, so I've been forced to watch it. You poor, poor thing. I, I got I got asked to watch The Notebook. Yeah. A huge bit of... Yeah, yeah, and word to the wise, The Notebook isn't about a laptop. <laughs> so, half, so half the theatre was crying and the other half was... Screaming. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Don't worry. Yeah. Um, yes. The, yeah, there was a lot of crying. Yeah. And a lot of screaming. Yeah. No sound was created. <laughs> Why is that? Because the manhood doesn't express anything. <laughs> no. <laughs> a huge, a huge ch- chunk of my manhood died that day. <laughs> So has it recovered? <laughs> oh well. So anyway, formula of romance. Let me fi- let, let me finish. <laughs> okay, we'll finish and we have to answer the damn question. Okay. The ratio of your ring finger to index finger. Yeah. Increases by the amount of romance romance movies that you watch. No testosterone. No, it's the other way around. Really? Yeah. See. So, if you have a big ring finger, you have more testosterone, or is it the other way around? Holy moly, my my left hand has a lot of testosterone, and my right hand has a lot of estrogen. Look at it. No. What? Yeah. Wow, my left hand's got a lot of testosterone. Yeah. And my right hand's got a lot of estrogen. Yes. Is that why I'm both male and female at the same time? Yes. 
Yeah, if you if you guys know me, you know I dress in a really unconventional way. Like I'm half male, half female. Yes, you you you're half vagina, half penis. Yeah, I'm a I'm a, <laughs> I'm a hermaphrodite. Or or as I like to call it, a he female. A he woman. A he woman. A she man. A she man. Yeah. A she man. A she man. Yes, I'm a she man. You're a she man. Yeah. Yeah. So. Formula, please. Okay. Okay. Boy meets girl. Uh, they lock eyes. Something magical happens. Then they have to split apart. Something magical happens. This isn't Harry Potter. <laughs> but they always do the whole sparkly music, violence. Everything just turns so warm. And you wonder why you're a Ravenclaw. So? Are you sure you're not a Hufflepuff? Well, that's the thing, though. I'm not too sure whether I'm a Ravenclaw or a Hufflepuff. Yeah, by, by the time, you, by the whole fact that you're saying about something magical happens. I said magic. <laughs> Sparkly music. Warm lighting. Warm lighting? Yeah. Then what happens next after they've locked up? Wait, 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 wait. Yeah? The only warm lighting I ever want to see. Yeah? Ever. Yeah? Either has to come from a fire or a heater. That is the only warm lighting I want to see. You're that manly. <laughs> yes. And, yeah. and on that note, yeah. we'll end it there. Really? We'll end it there. Okay. Just imagine Carol messed up the <laughs> And somehow Carol hands off the pet monkey. <laughs> Or a baby. Yeah. No, no. It would be even better if it was a pug. She ends up with a pug. She, and then she finds the pug has destroyed the wedding dresses. And it's like, the wedding's in two hours. <laughs> and she has to fix it. Sophie's getting excited. <laughs> no. We, we, need the, we need the car move down. So we're going to end it there for, yeah. for this week's episode. Okay. By all means, you can contact us on as yet undecided podcast at gmail.com or at the manus t h e m a r n u s yes or you can contact at Sophie or at Sophie nine seven o nine except on Instagram yes and have a good week um. Next week's podcast will be probably be released. No, wait. No, I got my Mondays mixed up. Sorry. My bad. I thought Queen's birthday was next weekend. But it's not. It's the week after. It's the week after? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Happy early birthday, Our Majesties. Yes. Yeah. <laughs>